Well, welcome to Planet Takers Conference 2019 Rain. I'm Katie and over here is Steve. If you're just joining us, we're your hosts, but you should know who these amazing people are. Rudy and Chelsea Nickaroo. Hello. Welcome. Oh, you need the mic. Oh, hi. <laughs> hello. Hello. It is great to see you guys. Have you been enjoying conference so far? Of course, you're our amazing pastors and our worship leaders. Um, what's been going on for you this week so far? Chelsea? Oh, me. <laughs> well, we've been singing a lot. Yes. Lots of good songs. But honestly, conference has been so incredible. Mm-hmm. I felt, and I said it last night, I feel like we're starting from what last year's ceiling was and just going to the next level. So it's absolutely amazing been awesome we've had one night session so far two day sessions and yeah. a boom session as well and so we're literally 24 hours into conference uh, and it really has been awesome just yeah. powerful so far yeah and for those that are at home and haven't been tuning in as regularly to the life of planet shakers there's doing? some big news in your yes. family is, in just a few months things are changing class. yes yes it's your first conference <laughs> With two of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, hopefully not two of me. No, that would be highly unfortunate no, for the world. That, right? uh, no. Yeah, no, we're pregnant. Congratulations. Yeah, six months. Come on. Woo. Come on. In a few months, your whole life's going to change. It's all going to change. For the better, of yes. course. Yep. And Maybe it's first conference. How are we feeling about that? You're feeling, you're feeling tired, aren't you? No, I feel good. I feel good. Honestly, the amazing thing is, is the place I feel the most healthy and like alive is when we're actually doing praise and worship. When I start to feel like awful is when I sit down. So what's the lesson there? Never sit. Always praise. <laughs> there you go. Preach. 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 Well, conference is going amazing. And uh, you guys are some of our pastors, some of our worship leaders. On Friday, I believe it's the 12th, worldwide, uh-huh. part two of our brand new album, Planet Shakers Rain, is being released. Yeah. You guys were there, you know, we recorded that live all over Asia. Yes, we did. Um, what was that like? You know, maybe, I don't know if you have a favorite song, um, or what else is going on with the band this year for Planet Shakers? Well, I thought it was brilliant. I wasn't actually there, but it was, <laughs> just, it was fantastic. You were there. I was there. So, um, I was looking after church. I was home. Yeah, he was home was looking after the church. Help. You guys were looking we were after there. church. I was there. Uh, it was honestly so incredible. And one of the things that we always love about going to Asia is the hunger. Oh, the hunger you. factor is yes. just through the roof. True. Um, I'm not actually kidding now because I have been there. Yes. So. <laughs> Many <laughs> times. We, you've been <laughs> more times than I have. So uh, it is amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. They're just the passion and the hunger. And it's it's not hype. It's, it's true hunger and desire for God to do something in that place. And he always moves. And that just translates so much to the album. So you have to get it. It's just going to bless you so much. And hopefully you will catch just a little bit of what we got to experience yeah. overseas. It's really powerful. Pastor Rudy, you just recently finished your master's, you smarty pants. I did, actually. Now, doctorate? for those that are... No. No, 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 doctorate no. next. No, 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 Have a baby. Have a baby first. Uh, for those that are at home, mm-hmm. they know how hard challenge, how challenging it is to study. Mm-hmm. Now, you didn't stop working. No. You didn't stop praise uh-uh. leading, worship uh-uh. leading, uh-uh. pastoring in multiple roles. You are our Planet Uni campus, uh, our campus pastor, our Planet Uni pastor. Uh-huh. Is there anything else you'd like to just keep doing? Uh, well, I'll keep doing it all, I think, for now. But, <laughs> but how did you get through your yeah. Masters? How um, much of a challenge was that for you? Yeah, absolutely. I think it was a challenge, um, fit, fitting it all in. Because a lot of it we did when we, well, I did when we were on the road. Uh, and so, you know, we, we last year we did a big tour through Europe in the bus. And um, so I'd be sitting up there in the front room of the bus and doing all my assignments and getting things done. But I, I guess... For me, I, I took a great opportunity to learn from Pastor Sam, uh, which she, she would encourage us. She always encourages us that if God has called you to it, there's got to be a way uh, for it to work in your life. And so obviously you've got to rely on the strength of the Holy Spirit. But um, yeah, absolutely. It was something that I very strongly felt like God had called me to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think whenever it's part of the calling, God will show you ways to, to make it work. And um, praise God, it's over though. Let's just say <laughs> that. So. Yeah. I bet. I bet you're pleased. Perfect timing. Just in time for a baby. Speaking of studying, we've got our very own Planet Shakers College right here in Melbourne. We have 
hundreds of students that travel from all over the world yeah. to come and study with yeah. us. For If you're watching for the first time, wherever you are, welcome. Yeah. We're coming to you live from Melbourne, Australia for Planet Shakers Conference Night 2. Yeah. It's going to be incredible. We've got some special guests, in, uh, more special guests in just a moment. But just some more information about our college. They, they offer a Diploma of Leadership right mm -hmm. here in Melbourne, mm -hmm. a degree in Ministry and a Bachelor of Theology. Bachelor now, yeah. full, this full year, amazing, yeah. this year for the first time, they're offering an online open day on April 24th. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can tune in for the online open day. You can go to the Planet Shakers College Facebook site and RSVP for that. They'll get you all the information. But just in case you'd be interested in studying or God is speaking to you in that area, Planet Shakers College could be for you. Here's yeah. some more yeah. information. Hopefully some more information coming to you right now. <laughs> for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. To step out in faith and to leave a place of comfort, to walk into the unknown can often seem impossible. But what if it wasn't? What if the next stepping stone to your destiny awaited you on the other side of your obedience? What if the impossible was possible? Come and find out at Planet Shakers College and be empowered to become all that God created you to be. Well, welcome back to Planet Shakers Conference 2019. I'm Katie and this is Steve and we are joined by the incredible Pastor John Hanna. Welcome. Wow, I'm back. And You're I'm back. I'm excited about being here. We as well. are so glad to have you back. Now, oh, you, you are one of our favorites here at Planet Shakers. They tell that to everyone. No, we here. don't. I we promise. Really don't. I promise. We really don't. <laughs> well, I'm We're pretty honest back. back here. I'm really honored to be back and I'm really expecting a great move of God. Well, we are too. And, right. and I guess for those at home, we want to get them expectant and ready for what you're speaking on tonight, if you didn't know that at home. Right. Um, but could you maybe give them a, a little bit of a hint of what to expect tonight? Tonight, um, the sermon is entitled, um, Who's in the House? Wow. And the whole point is to identify which seat you are in in the house. And prayerfully, you're in the seat that wants more of God. Awesome. So good. Amazing. We can't wait. Well, we can't. We're still getting over your, your sermon last year, <laughs> climbing up and down those, that, the those ladder. Stood a ladder. <laughs> and uh, a lot of our church, it really impacted and, yes. you know, in a major way. So we are pumped for tonight. So we've got viewers watching all over the world. Stay tuned. Pastor John himself is going to be preaching really soon. But um, you're the pastor of New Life Covenant Church in Chicago. Correct. I've been blessed to go to Chicago. What an incredible, incredible city. Hopefully you didn't come in the winter months. I did. It was freezing, <laughs> but it's still an amazing, amazing, yeah. amazing city. Um, a little birdie told us that your church just turned 15. 15 Is that right? And I'm excited. Congratulations. Yeah. That's actually incredible. Yeah. What's going on in the life of New Life Covenant and uh, what, what, what's happening this year? Well, we're actually building our own facility. Amazing. Wow. We've actually been renting for 15 years, so to God be the glory. Wow. We purchased the land and now we're building a facility that we can have our own church. So that will happen this year. It will be complete. That's amazing. That's so, so good. Hey, we, we recently, we stalk you on Instagram. I hope you don't mind. You should at home too. That's a great way to connect with Pastor John. But we saw that you were given a very unique gift from one of your congregation members, Jennifer. Can you oh, tell us what that was dog. and the story behind it? <laughs> Someone, um, they make handmade dolls. A doll, wow. And they took a picture of mine and made me a doll. And I was like, <laughs> they made that? you into a doll. I knew it. I was so amazed. I was so shocked. I was like, wow. Was it creepy or was it, it cool? Was creepy. It was creepy. It's was it like basement. one of those bobble heads on your car? It's in the basement. <laughs> you gotta wake up in the morning and come send it to your bed. I think that's a scary movie. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Do, do you know what else we loved about last year, Pastor John? Was your incredible dancing. Oh. We loved it. Any love more music. any more surprises for no. us tonight? Any more mm. dance moves no we dance can moves expect? No. no. Oh. It's going to be great, though. You're gonna, there is a word from the Lord. Yes. And we're going to do some um, search our hearts to see where we are. Amazing, amazing. And this is obviously, you've been with us before. It's not your first time in Australia. Yes. Is there anything, it's so far to come all the way here. You have no idea. We so honor you. We're so thankful that you would come and bless us. 
Is there anything that you've ever wanted to do in Australia that you've seen in the movies or that you've seen on TV Everyone that you haven't got yet to do? Everywhere. Yeah. And you haven't yeah. seen one yet? I have not. We, we've got them we, here where we well, live. <laughs> we actually are the campuses. <laughs> we actually are serious. We're the campus passes just in the north of Melbourne and it's about an hour north. We've got kangaroos everywhere. You've got to be real careful. We've got to take you. We'll take you there. Next time. Not this year, 2020. <laughs> okay, we'll hold you to that. We'll hold you to that. Well, look, we don't want to keep you. We want to help you get ready, Great. and we are so expecting for tonight. Now, if you've been listening to our conference, you'll know that we have uh, an amazing song called Rain, and it is dropping part two, our album, this Friday. So why don't we show you a bit of information about Rain? Well, welcome. Welcome to Planet Shakers Conference 2019, Rain. This is night two, night two. Pastor Steve. Night two. We are so excited. Are you excited at home? We want to know. How can, how can they tell us that? Well, we've got thousands of you watching all over the world. Whether you're watching on Facebook Live or our YouTube channel, Planet Shakers TV, or whether you're watching us on Daystar, shout out to our amazing partners at Daystar. We're so grateful and thankful for you. Hello, we want to, would you write in to us and tell us who you are, where you're watching from, and how excited you are? We've just spoken with Pastor Rudy and Chelsea and Pastor John Hanna all the way from New Life Covenant Church in Chicago. We are pumped. Would you connect with us via social media? Yep. Facebook, follow us at, at Planet Shakers on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, also follow us on our YouTube channel, Planet Shakers TV. Let us know where you're watching from. We are so excited that you would be with us. Yes. Don't forget to hashtag your photos, hashtag PSConf, that's P-S-C-O-N-F, and hashtag Planet Shakers, and we will be liking your photos, wanting to connect with you. We want to see you. You didn't have to get your clothes on today. You could be in your jammies. We want to see your cozy setup at home. Uh, we want to just make it as fun as possible for you, and we're so glad that you're joining us from wherever you are around the world. Well, how are you feeling about tonight, Pastor Steve? I am absolutely pumped. Last year, Pastor John Hanna was incredible. But um, I just wanted to also tell these guys, in case they didn't know, wherever it is that you're watching, we've got some incredible new music that's just been released by Planet Boom. Yes. And we heard it in the last session. It's called Jesus Over Everything. And it's an amazing album. And also comes hand in hand with a book that our very own Pastor Andy Harrison has written that's available for download. And so I uh, just wanted to let you know about that. And here's some more information about Jesus Over Everything. My name's Nick, I'm from Austin, Texas, and I choose Jesus over everything. It's Yai, and I choose Jesus over everything. I'm Ashley from Cape Town, and I choose Jesus over everything. I'm Ryan from Singapore, and I choose Jesus over everything. I'm John. I'm Martina. My name's Cameron. I'm Aliyah. I'm Troy. I'm Charlotte. My name's Rolando. I'm Darcy. My name's Tom. I'm Marco. I'm Jan. Hi, I'm Richard, and I'm from Cape Town, and I choose Jesus over everything. Well, welcome to Planet Shakers Night 2, Planet Shakers Conference 2019. Rain, there is less than a minute until we're going live, so we just pray that you are getting expectant and get, getting ready for God to move in your life, wherever you are watching. Now, 
we know where some of you are watching from. You've all been writing in. we got people watching in the America, USA, Mexico, Buenos Noches, India, Pakistan, Malaysia, Indonesia, Poland, Cape Town, Brazil, Fiji, Philippines, all around the world. We want to say thanks for writing in. Thanks for tuning in. We love you. And uh, Pastor John Hanna is about to be up tonight. He's going to be incredible. But here is Planet Shakers Band live Woo! from Melbourne, Planet Shakers Woo! Conference Rain 2019.
situation where the doctors found cancer in my body and it was this very song that got me through that season because I begin to say this might be what the medical report says but 
Jesus, I believe in you. It doesn't matter what they say to me. I believe in you. It doesn't matter what may come at me. I believe in you, Jesus. And you know what? These words, this faith declaration brought breakthrough into my situation. And the great news is I'm 100% cancer free today. But I know that if you're going through something like this, all you're gonna do is reach out and hold on to Jesus and declare, you are the way, Jesus. You're... Come on now. Come on, you speak to your situation. And so I praise all of that tonight.
right now. Who would be taking the baton? That would be Pastor Steve. Give it up for Pastor Steve, everybody. And Pastor T. How huh? you going? Right on time. <laughs> How you going, Planet Shakers? Welcome to night two of Planet Shakers Conference. Rain 2019. How you going, Pastor T? Very well, Pastor Steve. How are you? Welcome to everyone who's joined us online, by you via YouTube, Facebook, as well as Daystar Church. Would we take a moment to welcome everyone who's watching us online? Woo! Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you're enjoying the conference just as much as we are right here in Melbourne. You guys can stay right where you are. We're going to go to Plunder Shakers News. Then we're going to do some worship. Pastor T, that is a nice jacket. You like this? And do you like this? Absolutely. Do you like this that. bling? I don't know about the blue, but I like this blue here. <laughs> it's so good. Actually, you can just turn that inside out. That's right. It's the same jacket. Man City colors there. But we got all sorts of resources still available. We got two stores out in the foyer tonight. But also, you can do it on the app. And yes. then pick it up. You can order right now on the app and pick it up That's after right. the session. Certainly. Now, you can definitely get some shorts for $35, trackies for $45, socks for $10. Why don't you keep yourself warm as well as a bummer bag right here. Check what, out these oh, bad boys. Those. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Look at that over there. And, of course, you also get a bum bag for $25. Any ballers in the praise pit? Right there. I see some hands over there. They're available in the foyer. That's right. Make sure you get one. Now, what else is happening, Pastor Steve? Now, Pastor Steve, we want to let these guys know that, of course, some brand new Planet Shakers music, Rain Part 2, is being released this Friday. Come on. That's worldwide. That's right. You can, it's available on iTunes, Google Play, and every good platform online. Make sure you download it. Make sure you stream it. If you're watching online, make sure you purchase it as well. Not only that, though, you can actually purchase a hard copy right now in the foyer so make sure you get yourself one after the session ain't that right so good that's right and again just a shout out to all our viewers online watching on facebook via our youtube channel planet shakers tv and of course a shout out to our amazing partners at daystar and the thousands watching right now all around the world would you write to us tell us your name where you're watching from we are so blessed to have you with us and watching tonight but uh, right. we're going to head into some worship pastor t but before that let's look to the screens for planet shakers news Hi everyone, I'm Natalie from our Geneva campus. Welcome to night two of Planet Shakers Conference. Hope you had an incredible day and this is Planet Shakers News.
My name's Nick, I'm from Austin, Texas, and I choose Jesus over everything. It's Yai, and I choose Jesus over everything. I'm Ashley from Cape Town, and I choose Jesus over everything. I'm Ryan from Singapore, and I choose Jesus over everything. I'm John. I'm Martina. My name's Jamal. I'm Aliyah. I'm Troy. I'm Charlotte. My name's Rolando. I'm Darcy. My name's Tom. I'm Marco. I'm Jazz. Hi, I'm Richard, and I'm from Cape Town, and I choose Jesus over everything. News night two is done. Come on, somebody, get ready for tomorrow. It's going to be a powerful day. Be here bright and early, coffeeed up, ready to praise, ready to give him all you got. It's going to be incredible. But as for right now, God is about to move so powerfully. Get yourself ready. It's going to be amazing. Imagine for a second a child who is vulnerable, facing violence each day feeling like it's unescapable. They're frightened, exploited and hurt, and the damage is immeasurable. Half of all children are living a life this vulnerable. That's as many as one billion, and isn't that unbelievable? A problem that's hidden behind a closed door. A problem that causes many problems more. It's silenced, it's widespread and hard to ignore. Well, I'm here to tell you that this future isn't inevitable. There's power in standing up for the world's most vulnerable. We can help end violence now and make a child's hope achievable. But it takes a world to make it possible. There's a billion children affected. I know that's a lot. But you can help one. Just give that some thought. If you believe in children, they're educatable and defendable. Rise up and stand up. If you're willing, they're able. Come on, why don't we give World Vision a great hand? You know, for you, you may be here for the first time, Planet Shakers Conference, and we're so glad to have you, but for most of the journey of Planet Shakers, we've had a great partner of World Vision, and we've seen literally in the thousands of children sponsored. And so often people talk about what can we do to change the world? There's so much commentary about it right now in the news and throughout all sorts of movements. But the truth is, while people have been talking about it, partnering with World Vision, we've been doing it. We've been seeing lives of children change. Joth and I went to Indonesia a couple of years ago and we were out in this remote location and, you know, there was kids all over the place and we began to play a game of football with these kids. And at the end of the game, we, we'd actually been running through this long grass, and so we had prickles all over our pants. Like, I'm talking, you couldn't see our pants. It just looked like we sat down on a chair, and as we sat down, all these little kids came, and they just started to take all the prickles off our, our pants. And where it would have taken us half an hour to do it ourselves, these kids just did it in a minute. And I thought to myself as I sat there, wherever you go in the world, kids are the same. But the truth is that kids don't have the same opportunities all over the world. When we see a video like we saw on the screen there, we can become desensitized to what a billion kids are potentially in violent situations every night of their life. Not just bullying in the school, that's bad enough. But in their own homes, they're vulnerable, they're subjected to violent acts on a daily basis. Tonight, we come from a place and a country of incredible privilege. I love Australia. I love being a part of this country. But I want you to understand with privilege comes responsibility. 
Tonight, this is a moment for us to say, why don't we do something together? Why don't we decide that we can continue what we've been doing for over 15 years at Planet Shakers and partnering with World Vision? I'm happy to say that tonight, we've actually brought child sponsorship back. The last few years, we've done a few different initiatives, but we're right back to the groove of, let's take a child's life that seems like it's just a photo in a book, but actually we have the power in this room tonight to change a child's life and help them with some of the incredible empowerment programs that World Vision run to see those kids have resolve in their lives where they don't put their head on the pillow and wonder what's going to happen, but they go to sleep and wake up. They go to sleep and they know they've got an education, they've got a future just because we chose to do something. The challenge is we all say, oh, I really want to do something. You know, a story, and it's a true story, it's a little bit funny in a way, but I was driving down the road when I was about 22. I actually was working in a business setting in that time. And so I had my business shirt and my suit pants on and a tie. And I pulled up at some traffic lights. And as I pulled up at the traffic lights, there was a lady who had obviously been going through a tough time. I could see by the way she was dressed and just the circumstances around her kids. Just by sight, I knew that there was some things not right. One of the children just had a pair of shorts on. This is like in the downtown here in one of our Australian cities and I was sitting in my car watching this and I had the thought to myself as I saw one of the kids, there was three kids, but one of the kids just had a pair of shorts on. It was the middle of winter, no shirt. And I thought, he must be freezing. And I thought to myself, what can I do? Now, you know, in that moment, what can you do? You just have a little bit of compassion. Wow, some people do it tough, reflect on myself. I want to tell you, in that moment, random as it was, I thought, what can I do? I looked around my car, I didn't have a jacket, didn't have anything. Just thinking, I've got to help this kid. There I was, it may not have been a pretty sight, to be honest, but I took my tie off. Don't know what I was thinking. Took my business shirt off. Maybe I thought I was Superman. I took my shirt off. I wound down my window and said, kid, come here. I said, are you cold? He said, yeah. And his mum said a few things, expletives to me like, what are you doing? I said, I, I thought he might be cold. Maybe he wants my shirt. Without hesitation, she said, yeah, that'd be great. He'd love that. Here I am sitting in the middle of downtown in my car, <laughs> no shirt on. Don't know what I'm going to do next. It's the middle of the day. I've got to go back to the office. Can't go buy a shirt. I don't have one on. Yeah, think about that. But so often we say, what can I do? But in that moment, even if it was just for a second, that boy went home with a shirt on, had a little bit of warmth, and I drove away with a sense of, well, I did something. We can walk away from conference pumped up about what we can do, but do nothing. Or we can do something in this place. We can make a change. We can make a difference. We can change a life forever. It's not just a face on a piece of paper. It's a kid's life. They didn't choose where they are. With privilege for us comes responsibility. Why don't we go, I want to do something. That shirt I was wearing probably in back then cost about $40, $50. Sponsor a child cost $48 a month. $11 a week, two cups of coffee. Hey, we can do it. If you're under 18, you got to make sure you get parental permission. But all around the room, people are going to stand up right now. Our ushers, and they've got these in their hands. I would love it if tonight, they ran out of these because people went, you know what? I'm going to do something. Not just going to think about changing the world. I'm going to start it right here in this room tonight. So if you want to sponsor a child, here's what you've got to do. You're going to take one of these. 
At that moment, you're not committed. So I want to encourage you, take one of these and say, God, what can I do? Then take it to the World Vision stand. Maybe there's a kid that you pick up and you were thinking, I want to sponsor a kid in this nation. That's okay. You can take this to them and exchange to get the kid that you want to pray for, believe for and support. But tonight, let's not just say, oh, I wish I could do something. We can. Families can do something. Business person, you can do something. Small groups, urban life groups, you can do something as you stand together. But let's not do nothing. Let's position ourselves to do something. So if you want to do that, see the people with their hands raised. Come on, why don't you grab one of these all over the room? That's it, grab them. You lift your hand up, they'll get one to you. But come on, lift your hand up and say, you know what, I'm going to do something. I'm going to make a change in this room. That's right, all over the room, there's hands going up. Make sure they get one over here, over here. There's people all through the crowd in the middle. Come on, ushers, make sure they get it. Over there, there's people up the back. They're fantastic. Tonight, we're saying to violence, to children, we're not going to stand for it anymore. We're going to make a difference. We're going to make a change. We're going to do something in this room tonight to bring a change. Come on, just keep your hand up. There's still some people with hands up over here in the middle section. There's quite a few. Let's get to them. There's hands over here. Here, you can have this one right here. Anybody else, keep your hand up and we're going to hand back to the team in just a moment. But I want to thank you because next year we're going to come back and rather than going, oh, I wish I'd done something, you made a difference. Let's bring a change to the problems that we see. Thank you for continuing to support World Vision. Go check out their stand.
individual I believe right now the Holy Spirit is coming upon us with that spirit of wisdom and revelation that we will truly hear his voice tonight oh we open up our hearts our minds we open up our lives, Holy Spirit. Would you speak? We incline our ear to you tonight. Would you speak over us? Would you sing over us? Would you shout over us? Would you declare over us, oh God, songs of deliverance, songs of freedom, songs of joy, songs oh, of the prophetic, songs of the future, God. just ready to receive all that God has to say to you tonight. To some of us, He's saying you're free. That addiction is broken. For others, He's saying you're healed. That sickness is broken. For those of us here that need provision, He's saying, I am your provider. Watch me open up the floodgates of heaven over your life that you would receive a blessing so vast that you can eat, cannot contain it. This is what our God is saying to us. Would we open up our hearts? Speak, Holy Spirit. Visions, dreams. Receive it right now. Thank you, Lord. You're so powerful. So powerful. So able. 
so faithful.
sing with all of the angels. Because he's so holy. He's so worthy of our highest praise. right now people's spines are getting straight 
vertebrae are coming into line. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You're releasing people of their pain, Lord, that they've carried in their back, in their neck, in their shoulders. Lord, you're lifting that up right now. I thank you, Jesus. Right now, you're restoring ankles. You're restoring ligaments. You're knitting things together, Lord, in our bodies. I see that He's healing blood conditions right now. It's like a blood transfusion with the blood of Jesus. The life that is in the blood of Jesus is surging through your bodies right now, releasing that healing. Oh, we reach out. Come on, if you need a miracle in this place, reach out for your miracle. Jesus, the miracle worker, is here tonight. reach out to you. We reach out.
supernatural rain. the rain from heaven. Pour it out. I hear the sound of the heavy rain. God, would you do something in this place tonight? Unprecedented. Your rain would fall in Jesus' name. Come on, let's thank the Lord for what he's already done in this place. Come on, thank you. Come on. Let's lift his name up. Come on. Thank you. Why don't you start heading back to your seats here at the front? Well, it's great to have you here tonight. If you're watching on Daystar, we're so glad that you're here. If you're watching live online, whatever the case may be, in the auditorium, it's a great privilege to have you with us. It's your first night with us tonight. It's already been so great, but it's just getting stronger and stronger. You know, in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, that was a little slow. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, it says, So we fix or we focus our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. Ah, oh, but what is unseen is eternal. 
You see, we're here at a conference and our focus is on what God is wanting to do in us so that we can go and do what He purposed us to do, who He purposed us to be. But yet most of our lives are focused on what we can see rather than the unseen, the supernatural of God. You know, in January this year, my family and I decided to do something that we do often. I don't know about you, but I love to go to the movies. And uh, we decided that we'd go and see the movie Aquaman. And uh, quite appropriate to talk about Aquaman at a conference called Rain. But we went and my son found that it was on at IMAX. So we went to the IMAX cinema and I haven't been there for a long time here in Melbourne. And as you walk in, it says, the world's largest screen. And I was excited about it. It was in 3D. We got the highly healthy food, the Coke and the drinks and the popcorn and all the other stuff. And we sit in our seats about eight, ten rows back from the screen, but the screen is so big that you can't really focus from one side to the other. But I'm excited. When I go to a movie, I even like watching the ads. I like watching the trailers of movies to come. I'm excited. But just as the first trailer came on, I'm watching the screen, the biggest, world's biggest screen, and suddenly a fly comes on the screen. Now, you might think, how could you even see a fly on that big screen? The reason was because the fly wasn't on the screen there. It was in the projector room flying around the lens. And suddenly, I couldn't see anything else except the fly. And I'm looking and thinking, somebody's got to get rid of the fly. So as a true parent, we have the right to do this. I said to my son, you need to go and sort out this problem. And he, he's like, oh, Dad, you know, and then suddenly there's a rustling in the crowd. You could see that people were not, get, they just could see the fly. And can you believe it then just a moment later, a second fly comes on the screen. I'm like, what happened in the projector room? Did something die up there? I'm trying to get them to sort out the fly. And the main feature movie starts... 15 minutes, I've got no idea what started, what happened in the first 15 minutes of Aquaman to this day. Because all I can see is two flies on this huge screen. But how often do we lose our focus from what is the main screen of our life, the main purpose of our life? We get distracted with the smallest of things. We're here tonight we're about to take an offering. We could just take another offering like we do at conference or we could say, God, we understand that this isn't just an offering. Planet Shakers is good soil. We've been doing this for 20 years and we understand that this is about something far more than paying for a building. Oh, this is about something eternal. This is about hundreds of thousands of people's lives that have been changed over the years. Visions that have been birthed in people's hearts who have started churches. Business people who have got a, a, a vision for the kingdom in this environment. Oh, we're focusing tonight on something that is unseen. But you see, God always requires something that is natural. He's looking for us to put our faith into action but yet some of us have been distracted I remember coming to conference and emptying everything into the offering admittedly I didn't have much to empty at that stage of my life but then that year seeing God do incredible things I want to stir you tonight planet shakers let's not get caught on what we see let's not get distracted by what's around us what we have what we don't have. Let's remember that tonight there's something eternal that is beginning. There's something that is being unlocked. There's something that's being unleashed in this place. We're saying, rain, open the windows of heaven, God. And all he requires is some people who'll say, I'm going to fix my gaze 
I'm going to take what I have and I'm going to give it over to you. And God, I'm going to see you come through. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hand out some cards on the screen. There's ways that you can give. You can give by check or text giving or bank transfer or credit card. It's all there, the information. But I don't want you to prepare it just yet. I want you to hand it out, ushers, and as you hand it out, I just want to tell you one more thing. I've been involved in something that's a part of Planet Shakers, but it's far bigger than just Planet Shakers, called our Believe Campaign. We've seen incredible things just in the last few years. We've seen nearly 200,000 people in Papua New Guinea and Fiji make decisions for Jesus Christ, eternal things, things that are unseen in here, but ah, oh, God is doing something out there. And the team came to me and said, Pastor Neil, there really isn't a big enough sound system to do what we need to do in those countries. So after a long drawn out, trying to work out how we could do it, we decided we needed to buy a sound system. They came back and the, the, the best, most cost-effective way for a sound system to reach a crowd of 100,000 plus was going to cost us $300,000 just for the speaker system. And in my heart, when they told me, I had this sense of, uh, let's do it. Of course, I had to clear it with our board and different people before we could move forward. But in me, there was a sense of, God, you're going to come through. Everything we've done relating to souls, relating to reaching the South Pacific, you've come through, you've covered the budget. God, we're going to dare to believe you. I'm going to tell you, as within a week of us having a board meeting, a man comes to us. He says, Pastor Neil, my business made more than I expected and I want to give the surplus to the Believe campaign, not knowing anything about what we were believing for. It's only one week later. He wrote a check for 714,000, hang on, hang on, hang on, before you get excited, 714,000 kina, which is, which is uh, P&G money. Came to 299,958 dollars. I could live with believing for the 42 or putting that in myself. But I want you to understand something. Maybe you're believing here, Pastor, for a building program. Well, why don't you take a seed tonight? Why don't you focus your capacity? Why don't you come and go, this is what I believe I need to do and this is how I need to position myself. Business person that's looking to unlock something in this place. Because you see, I had to pull the trigger and say, we're gonna believe for a sound system. It's a great story, but the reason that God came through is not because Neil's great, not because Planet Shakers is great. He came through because we chose to focus on the unseen things. What are the unseen things? Ah, souls. I'm believing that that sound system is going to enable us to speak to people in the millions in the next five to 10 years. I'm believing that in the next five years, we're going to see over a million souls in the South Pacific, one for the purposes of Jesus. I'm telling you, we need to fix our gaze, not on what we see, but on the unseen, the eternal. So tonight we're going to take an offering. It's not just about stuff, but it's about people positioning themselves, focused with that sense of, I'm going to get back to what I believe on purpose to do. And we're going to give an incredibly powerful offering. So I'm going to encourage you now, write that check out. Get ready with that text giving. Do it right now. Get that card ready. Do whatever you're going to do. And in just a moment, we're going to take this offering and believe that we're going to shift something for eternity in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now across this crowd that we wouldn't just take an offering. We wouldn't just focus a group of people to raise some money, but we tonight would position ourselves that we would see a breakout on the right and the left of people coming to Christ. We would continue to see in our churches hundreds and thousands of people weekly getting saved. God, that we would remember that the reason we come together is continue to be reminded of your purpose on our lives, which is far more about what we don't see than what we do. Your plan, not ours. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, ushers, let's take a great offering in this place. You know, as they're taking the offering tonight, 
It's a great privilege for us to have somebody that we've just met at Planet Shakers over the last few days. And uh, Fernanda Broom is a, is a phenomenal artist out of Brazil. Who likes Brazil? And uh, come over, come over, you know. And her and her husband have just planted a church in the last few years, got a passion for the local church. So really on the same page as us, not just an artist, but believing that God is going to lose their local church. Also, Grammy Award winning multiple times, over 6 million albums, not just songs, but albums have been sold and uh, millions of people on social media follow us. So I think it's a great privilege for us to have Fernanda with us tonight. So come on, why don't you thank her as she comes and she sings as we take the offering. Stay seated, you're taking an offering. Stay seated, stay seated. We, we know you want to honour her, but stay seated. And she's going to sing. Why don't you go? Thank you so much for inviting us. Before we Hello. start the song, I think it would, we should teach them in Portuguese. It's a good idea. How to sing the chorus. Yes. Now, for those of you who don't know, we, we have done a Spanish album before. And yeah. we, we had to learn Spanish. It was very hard for us. But then Portuguese is a whole other language. But you just did. Did I do okay? Yes. You've a very, you're a very good teacher. Oh, thank you. You're a very good class. <laughs> But we, this is a simple song, and we, so let's teach them the chorus so they can sing along in Portuguese, yeah? Let's try. Okay, so you sing it, and then we'll repeat after you. Escolho a ti. Escolho a ti. Escolho a ti. Escolho a ti. Em todo tempo, em todo lugar, escolho a ti. Em todo tempo, em todo lugar, escolho a ti. Are you ready? Em todo tempo, em todo lugar, escolho a ti. All right, break It's it down. Easy. So, so when it gets to that chorus, we want to hear you sing it really loud, all right? Let's take it from the top. Here we go. As coisas chamando minha atenção. Olho pra ti Mesmo quando te amar Eu vivo pra ti Mesmo quando as nuvens negras vêm Escolha a ti Escolha a ti Let's go, bro. 
Give it up for Fernanda. Thank you for the checks. Gina, Woo. Fernanda, my voice is gone, has 12.7 million followers on Instagram. So uh, we're going to be releasing that single in Portuguese so that you're going to be on YouTube singing Portuguese. Why don't we stand to our feet? A few years ago, uh, by the way, I want to welcome all, all our pastors and our friends that have come from all over the world. It's great to have you here. Amazing. People have been coming here for a long, long time. So thankful for you. Um, so amazing. Um, A few years ago. Hey guys, how you going? Good. Were you trying to sneak on really quietly and stuff? You okay? You all right? Okay, cool. Just making sure. Oh, another person. Hi, hi, how are you? You good? Okay, good, fantastic. Anyone else about to come on? <laughs> a few years ago, I was preaching in Chicago. And I saw, I heard about this guy that Planet Shakers Band had played in his church. And he, they, out of all the trip in America on that trip, they talked about this guy. And I was like, oh yeah, cool. I was preaching at a conference that this guy turned up. And I'm like, Wow, wow. You know when inside you meet somebody that your spirit leaps? When I heard Pastor John Hanna preach for the very first time, I thought, we got to get him to Planet Shakers. He came last year. And I, I asked all the boomers, I said, who did you like? And they liked everyone, but they said, Pastor John Hanna, he was lit. So we are so honored to have you here, Pastor John. So come on, Planet Shakers, give it up. Australia. Before you sit, can we celebrate Pastor Russell and Pastor Sam for the amazing, 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 amazing job. I know you've been worshiping, but with no music, can we lift our hands and open our mouths? Can we just hear the sound of worship in the building? Come on, open your mouths. Let's hear what the sound of worship without music behind it sounds like in this building. We honor you, we glorify you. You are God, you are mighty, you are wonderful, and there is no one like you. You are a great God, a mighty God, a strong God. You are the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. You are our deliverer, our provider, our everything. And we open our mouths and we give you glory. We open our mouths and we bless you because you are a great God. You are an, a mighty God. You are an amazing God. And there is no one like 
like you. You are highly lifted in this place. We blow you up in this place, God. We call you our God. We call you our Savior. We call you our everything. You're the lover of our souls. You're all that we have, we need, and we want. Come on, why did you stop talking? He's been too good to you. You should never run out of words talking about your God. Come on, you all, for 10 more seconds, open your mouth. Oh, you are everything. You are everything. You're the beat of our heart. You're the skip in our step. You're the smile on our face. We bow in your presence. We blow you kisses and let you know that we can't live without you. We can't move without you. We can't make it without you. You're everything that we have, we need, and we want. And what do we do? We blow you up, God. We bless you on today. Come on, can I hear the whole building? Open your mouths. Hallelujah. On your way to your seat, make sure you introduce yourself to the one next to you. Make sure you know who you're worshiping with. Hello, my name is... Tell them where you're from. <laughs> know who you're sitting next to. So if any of your belongings come up missing, you can know who to call the police on. Amen. I'm honored to be back um, for the my second time at Planet Shakers, and grateful that I'll be back tomorrow morning preaching at the 9.30 service. All right, let's go. Let's get our Bibles. Let's go Bible. Let's go Bible. So that song, Rain, messed me up when it kept saying, we're ready. I was like, yes. That's my new cut right now. We're ready. How many of y'all are ready for a move of God? How many of y'all came to Plenty Shakers because there's something that you need God to do for you? Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm at a place in my life that I don't just need to go to church just to be going, but I need to make sure that I'm in the right place at the right time and that I'm around the right people to make sure that I get everything that God has for me. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to 1 Samuel, the third chapter. Okay. That was scary. <laughs> 1 Samuel, the third chapter. And, t okay. <laughs> You're not going to do that every time I mention the scripture. Listen, so tonight, the question is, who's in the house? Like, there are a lot of us in this building, but... There are different um, reasons that we're here. There are different personalities here. There are different characters here. And if you don't mind, I want to go to the house of a priest by the name of Eli. And we're going to look at four different people that are in the house. And the question is, which one do you relate to? If you have your Bibles, let's look at the priest. In 1 Samuel 3 and 2, it reads, One night, look at this, um, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see. Here's the line that you can underline. Was lying down in his usual place. Eli would represent those of us in the, in the building that have positions, that have title. Um, we're older, 35 on up. You will be that Eli. That's the position. The second one are the boys, the association. That's in 2 Samuel 2 and 12. Allow me to flip it. This one I want to use out of the King James Version, out of the King James Version. That's, that's when you know you're really deep, when you go King James. That's when you've been sipping tea with Jesus, when you can read the King James Version. Until you sip, with Je sip tea with Jesus, you're not that deep. Listen, in 2 Samuel 2 and 12, let's look at this one. It says, now the sons of Eli, watch this word, were the sons of Belial, 
The word Belial means worthless. The word Belial means worthless. But they are the sons of the priests. But the Bible says, but they're the sons of Belial, which is also scary, the next part of this verse. They knew not the Lord, which means that you could be raised in the house but not know him. You can be born out of a lineage of people that knew him, but you never got an opportunity to know him for yourselves. The third one that we want to look at is the marked one, and his name is Samuel. If you look at the screen, we're going to read this one. You ready? In verse 1, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. Slide down to the third verse. The lamp of the Lord had not yet gone out. And Samuel, let's look at his location, was lying down in the house of the Lord. Here it is, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel answered, Here I am. Who is in this house? We're going to look at four characters, and if you don't mind, we're going to start at the first one that I mentioned to you, the priest. Allow me to speak to those of us that have been saved for quite some years. Allow me to speak to those of us that hold positions and titles that are in this building. Eli represents the oldest person in the house. If anybody should know God, it should be Eli. He holds, watch me, the heaviest position. He is the priest. Please listen for those of us that are older. We have to be careful that we don't become too comfortable in our positions that we're not spiritual. We have to be comfortable, watch me, that we don't become so comfortable with titles and positions, but we lack oil. We lack the anointing. Allow me to give you three things about him. Although you have the position, number one, you lack discernment. The Bible says that when Hannah even went to the temple to pray, that only her lips were moving. Please listen at this. But the priest looked at her and thought that she had been drinking. And he said to her, how long are you going to keep coming in here drinking? And she says, I'm not drinking. She says, but I'm crying out to the Lord. My soul is crying out. But he was not spiritual enough to tap in or to discern where she was. We have to be careful that you don't get so comfortable that you can't tap into or discern a move of God. You got to be comfortable. Everyone, be careful. Everyone listen to me. If you've been with Jesus 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, I am now 55 years old. I accepted Christ as a teenager at the age of 17. My biggest fear is that I will become so comfortable, so comfortable that the anointing can come in the room, but I won't feel him. We leave it to the young people to do all the jumping but we don't worship. Not only was he not discerning, his sight was off. The Bible said that there was very little vision. Please listen. If anybody should have had vision, it should have been Eli. If anybody should have gone into prayer and asked God, what's next for this gen next generation? It should have been Eli. But the Bible says that he could barely see. He had little vision. The third thing about Eli, please listen to this. He could not hear like he should have been able to hear when God was calling Samuel. God called Samuel. Samuel jumped up and ran to Eli. Guess what? Eli didn't hear anything. Eli never heard God call. 
For those of us that are in this building, if you be a pastor, if you be a leader, if you be 35 and older, you have more history with God than some of these teenagers. If anybody should be the first ones to lift their hands and give God glory, it should be us. It should be the older ones that are lifting their hands and opening their mouths that the young people can look at us and say, I want the same God that they have. Allow me, if you don't mind, for a few minutes, allow me to introduce the younger generation to the God of our fathers. Everyone 35 and older, I need you to stand to your feet. And I need you to think about how good God's been to you. I need you to think about where he called you from. I need you to think about what he cleansed you from. I need you to think about ways that he's made out of no way. I need you to think about how he's healed your body. I think you, I need you to think about how he took care of your children, how he took care of you, how he protected your house. If you know that I am talking to you, can I get the older generation to lift your hands, open your mouths, and bless your God? Go! 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 You should be the planet shakers. Go! You should be the planet shakers. You should be the worshipers in the building that the next generation want to know your God. But Eli wasn't there. You can be seated. The Bible says in that first verse that I read you, he was lying down in his usual place. Please, let's check ourselves that we're not lying in a usual place, watching but not worshiping, watching but have no vision, watching but can't hear what God is saying to this generation. Allow me now to go to the associates if you're in the building. Those of you that you're associated with a church, but you really don't know God. You're in the youth group, but do you have a personal relationship with him? You came to Planet Shakers, but did you really come to tap into God? Or you came to hook up? Can we just talk for a minute? Let's go Bible. Let's go Bible. So there were two boys hanging out in the church. Their names are Hoffna and Phineas. Shut up. They would come to the temple. Let's go Bible. The Bible says that people would bring their sacrifices, throw it over in a pot, and their servants would come and stick a fork in and take the sacrifice, watch me. But the boys never put anything in. There's some of you, we've done all this worshiping, but you never added to it. You just sat here, chilling. Looking smooth. Looking like you all of that in a bag of chips. Got on your rain shirt so tight because you want somebody to see your body. Can we talk? Let's go Bible. <laughs> Let's go Bible. Watch this. They never put anything in the pot. They never added anything. Then the Bible says, watch me. They finally got to the point that they told their servants, don't even wait on them to put it in. Go and demand that they give us meat before they boil it. So they are only takers. 
They are only takers. They never put anything in. They only come to take. Question, are you sitting next to a taker? Somebody who never puts anything in the worship, but then when the anointing comes, now you want to go up? No. Don't go up if you didn't help us go in. I need you to check your section out and make sure you're not sitting around the takers. Who are the takers? They didn't come in the building with a hallelujah. They didn't come in the building with a holy. They didn't come in the building with a Lord, I love you. They're just waiting on the band to start so that they could jump. What if the band never plays? Do you still have a hallelujah? What if the band never hit an instrument? Do you still have a thank you, Jesus? What if nobody jumped? Will you jump because God has been good to Check your section out and make every taker uncomfortable in your section. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. On your way to your seat, touch your neighbor, tell him I'm not a taker. Come on, let's go Bible. <laughs> let's go Bible. Let's go Bible. This messed me up. You ready? The Bible says, please watch this, that they would literally come to the temple. Let's go Bible. And the Bible said that they would meet the women who served at the entrance of the temple and hook up with them. Watch me. In other words, your rap doesn't work on worldly girls. It only work on church girls. So you never hook up outside the church. You only can get a kiss in the church. Cause your Mac really not that strong. <laughs> so what they do is they come to throw people off. And you gotta be careful growing up in church, listen to me, when you're trying to live a consecrated life, everybody in the building doesn't wanna be kept. Everybody in the building doesn't wanna live for God. Everybody in the building doesn't wanna live a celibate life. Everybody in the building didn't come to Planet Shakers to see God. They came to see you, girl. I see you. So they were takers, both in the spirit and in the natural. Watch me. But then there are some Samuels in the house. There's some Samuels in this building. So who are the Samuels? Number one, the Samuels are those of us that have been marked by God. Let's stop for a minute. What do you mean marked? Before you were even conceived, God had already marked you to be one of his. Let's talk Bible. Let's talk Bible. Everybody look at me. When you've been marked, it doesn't matter what your mother is or what your father is. The Bible says, moreover whom he did predestine, them he also called, which means that you don't have a choice in the matter. And when you've been marked, I don't care how much you try to fit in, you never fit in because the hand of God is on your life. Can we just talk Bible? Isaac was marked. Samson was marked. John the Baptist marked. Jesus marked. 
My mother told me when I got older, when I accepted the Lord, she says, I knew that you would end up giving your life to the Lord. She says, because when I was pregnant with you, I was at church, and in one of the services where the anointing of God was strong, you start moving and kicking that I thought that I was going to have a miscarriage. She said, I ran to my mother and I said, something's wrong. Something's wrong with the baby. And my grandmother looked at her with a smile on her face and says, nothing's wrong with that baby. God just marked him. And there's some of you all in the building. I need you to know that you've been marked by God. I need you to know that I don't care what the devil try. You've been marked by God. I came to let you know that you would not be like your family. Why? Because you've been marked by God. I want to tell you why you have so much warfare. Because you've been marked by God. Those of you that know that your life is different, can I hear your worship right there? Go. I need you to worship him. That you're not like your mother, that you're not like your father, that you're not like your sister, that you're not like your brother, that you're not like the community that you even grew up in. You are marked by God. I need you to warn three people around you. You have no idea what they've been going through, but God sent them in this building to let them know that they have been marked by God. Can you do me a favor? I need you to go to three people, shake their hand and say, you have been marked by God. Even on Daystar, you're watching us right now and I want to thank you for the opportunity and I want those of you that are watching on television to know you have been marked by God. You have been marked by God. You have been marked by God. You have been marked. Marked. I want to share something with you. Have a seat. So, I'm from Chicago, and I was born and raised in poverty. My parents conceived me when they were teenagers and both end up dropping out of high school. My father eventually gave in to the streets and ended up going to prison for murder. And when he got out of prison, um, I was so eager to meet him. But what he didn't know is that I had been marked. So when I met him, listen, my mother sent me to visit him one weekend, and my father was a consistent marijuana smoker. And I'll never forget it, I was young. I wasn't even a teenager yet. And my father called me in a room and said, son, I wanna teach you how to smoke. He said, open your mouth and I'm gonna blow the smoke into you and I just want you to inhale. What he was doing was that, see, there's something called bloodline curses. And alcoholism, drugs, illiteracy, and poverty is in my bloodline. So while he's breathing, what he thinks he's doing is that he's passing on the bloodline curse. But what he doesn't know is that I've been marked. So as much as he was blowing, God was stopping the smoke. And some of you all, I came to let you know, you're not going to be like your family. You're not going to be like your brothers or your sisters. You're not even going to be like the community that you grew up in. The hand of God is on your life. And I need you to be comfortable with the fact that God has predestined you for greatness. Is there anybody in the building that knows that you should have been like them, but God stopped you? That God didn't let it happen to you? I need to hear your praise. I I need it didn't work it didn't work it didn't work they see that So the question is, you've been marked, but you've, all, you've, you, 
you have also been assigned. In other words, I'm going to assign you to someone to make sure that they cover your call. When I say assign, and I need this generation to hear me, we are in a day right now that no one wants to serve. No one wants to serve. For everyone that is under the sound of my voice, you're in the ministry that you're in to serve. Listen, listen, listen. You're not going to be known by your Instagram followers. God's not going to blow you up by how many likes you get. The only way that God's going to use you for his glory is how you serve. The Bible says, he that is great among you must become a servant. The only way that Elisha got the double portion is that he served Elijah. The only way that Joshua got to get the mantle from Moses is that he served. Watch me. The only way that Ruth was able to conceive in bed was because she served. Naomi. And the Bible says, and Eli served the Lord under, I'm sorry, that, that Samuel served the Lord under Eli. Question, who are you under to get the oil? Who are you under to get the oil? Watch me, this is not about a paycheck. This is not about you walking in with somebody looking important. This is about you serving so that you can be everything that God created you to be. And you have to know how to serve. Watch me. Even servitude, watch me. Servitude is putting yourself in the back seat, letting somebody else get in the front seat, and you pray that they make it to their destination. Servitude is if you sit next to somebody, you might need a breakthrough, but you know how to lay hands on the one next to you, and you pray that they get the breakthrough that they need. Servitude is, watch me, watch me, finding a need in your ministry and finding out how you can meet that need. Servitude is, watch me, when you see a problem, you don't ask somebody to fix it, you find out how you can fix it. Servitude is that if you sit in a row and everybody seems to be off, then you serve them in prayer and you begin to decree and declare that everybody in my section is going to get a breakthrough before we leave here. I wish you had a servant in your section. I wish you had somebody in your section that could pray that God was in a move in your section. I wish that you had somebody that could serve you and see that you're going through something right now and literally lay hands on you and believe that God could literally. So here it, the Bible says, he's marked, he's assigned, He's marked, he's assigned, he's assigned, he's serving Eli. While his boys are doing everything else, he's serving Eli and he's worshiping the Lord. And then he's positioned. You got to hear me now. There's a lot of songs in this conference about glory, about God rain down your glory. The Bible says that Eli was in one place, his usual place. But the Bible says that, can you bring up the picture of the Ark of the Covenant? The Bible says that Samuel was laying next to the glory. And I came to let you know that God sent me from Chicago for those of you that are glory seekers. Listen, listen. While he's laying next to the glory, while he's laying next to the glory, he hears a call. Samuel! He runs to Eli. Did you call me? He said, I didn't call you. Go lay back down. He went, 
And he lays back down. Samuel! Did you call me? I didn't call you. Go lay back down. This is how some of you all came here today. You're chasing God. Samuel! Did you call me? I didn't call you. And the Bible says that he perceived that it was the Lord calling him. Listen, God's been calling you for a while. Because there's another place in him that he's ready to take you. There's another place in God that he's about to take you that you're about to get clarity. Everybody hear me? There's a history-making anointing in this building. Listen carefully. If you study scripture, the Bible will let you know that Samuel is the only person in the Old Testament that holds three positions at one time. He's a prophet, he's a priest, and he's a judge. He's the only one that could prophesy, speak life. When he speaks, the Bible says none of his words hit the ground. That whatever he speaks, it immediately happens. He's a judge. He can bring sound judgment to a confused situation. And for many of you all, God's about to give you the oil to bring sound judgment to a confused situation. He's a priest, which means that he's an intercessor, which means that God will use you to come in his presence on behalf of somebody else. Samuel! 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 Where are the Samuels in here that I came to get? Samuel! Where the game changers? Where the ones in the building that God want to get the glory out of your life? Samuel! Where the ones that God's ready to use in an amazing way? If you know that God is pulling you to another level in him, as I shout, I need you to begin to make your way to the altar. Samuel! Come now. Move. Samuel! Come now. Move. Samuel! Come now. Move. Samuel! 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 Come, come now. Samuel! I came to get you tonight. 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 Lift your hands in this building. 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 You've been marked by God. 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 You've been assigned to your ministry. You've been assigned to serve. You will serve until the Lord says, well done. You've been assigned to serve, and you are in the position to hear what God has for you. You are in the position to get the glory, to get the oil of God. Lift your hands and open your mouths, and let me hear you worship God right there. Let me hear you worship the glory of God, 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 the glory of God. We're ready, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready.
We're ready. We're ready. We are 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 ready. Come on. I'll be here. You open your mouths. Come on. Come on. A few more minutes. Glory. Glory coming. Glory coming. Glory coming. The rain is coming. The rain is coming. The rain of his glory. 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 A mighty move of God. Everyone that know how to pray on the Holy Ghost, can I hear you pray on the Holy Ghost? We're ready. We're ready. The rain is coming. The rain is coming. The rain is coming. Fresh wind. Fresh wind. Fresh revelation to every pastor that is in the building. I want you to prepare yourself for fresh wind coming in your direction. Fresh revelation. We're ready. We're ready. We are ready. We are ready. We are ready. We are ready. Come on. Come on. A few more minutes. A few more minutes. A few more minutes. A few more minutes. The rain of God. The rain of God. The rain of God. The rain of God. God, the glory of God is about to fill this building. Your gift is about to be stirred. God's about to give you the ability to speak life. You came in dry, but God's ready to send fresh rain. You came in empty, but God's ready to send fresh rain. The glory of God, the glory of God. I hear the sound, I hear the sound, I hear the sound. God told me that he would release glory. God told me that he would release his glory in the service. God told me that he would release his glory in the service. That you would, a prophetic anointing be we release. Uh, the intercessory, the priestly anointing be we release. Come on here. The judge anointing that you would make sound decisions would be released in this building. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Let the God that answer fill this building. Let the glory of God fall heavy in this building. Come on, open your mouths. Let me hear worship. We're going to sing this song. I need you to sing it like you're really ready for God to reign. I don't need you to sing it just to be singing it. But I need your inner man to begin to cry out for the reign of God. We're ready, God. We're ready. We're going to push. We're going to press in. We're going to press in. Come on, press. Come on. Press. We are ready. Do what? We are ready. Come on. So pour it out. Pour it out. We are ready. His ear is not we too heavy that he cannot hear you. His hand is not too short. Pour it out. Pour it out. We are ready. Whatsoever you ask in my name, I'll do it for you. Come on. Come on, we're almost there. Let your soul cry out. Every pastor. Come on. Hey. Hey, hey, everybody. 
to bless you. I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. We're ready. Everybody say. Reach over, grab a neighbor by the hand, hold that hand. We're about to have a corporate reign. Hilt this building. God, I call those that are in a dry place to come out right now. I pray, God, for even those that are older that found themselves complacent. I pray, God, that you send a fresh wind. I pray, God, that you begin to stir gifts again. I pray, God, that they begin to have visions again. I pray, God, that you let the word be released in their soul. I pray, for God, for every preacher, every missionary, every evangelist, every teacher, every young person, God. We want your glory, and we are ready for your glory to reign in this building. We want the weight of God to be in here. We want plenty seconds to be life-changing. Let your glory hold that hand. Let the God that answer by glory, let the God that answer by glory fill this building. Fill this building. Fill this building. Secure young adults. Heal bodies. Get ready. Hold that hand on the count of three. I want you to shout glory. And the glory of God will fill this building. You ready? I want you to call the glory down in your section. Two. I need you to get ready to call glory. Here we go.
Come on, get lost in that for a minute. Lift your hands and get lost in that. Come on, get lost in that. Forget about everybody in this building. Get lost in the rain. I pray that God seal your future. Pray that you be everything that he created you to be. You are in the right house. You're marked for greatness. You're assigned to the right people to serve. And you stay in the position to receive from God. Let me hear you open your mouths right there for one more time. Open your mouths. Get on those. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Can I flow for a minute? I hear the Lord saying, tell pastors to press in. Pastors, God's not done with us. Preachers, God's not done with us. There's fresh manna in this building. Everyone in any shape, form, or fashion in ministry, lift your hands and open your mouths and press in. Every youth pastor, press. Tomorrow at 9.30, I'll be back in this building to share one more word to make sure that you become everything that God has created you to be. You a history maker. You a curse breaker. And the hand of God is on your life. Lift your hands again and tell God we're ready. Come on, tell him we're ready.
sing it one more time. He's touching people here right now. Just go. Every morning, my grandfather would get up and he'd go, I receive your Holy Spirit. He would, like he was taking a breath, he would, I receive you. Why don't we try that? Ready? One, two, three. I receive. There's miracles here right now. Whatever you need, it's yours. In the name of Jesus, the breakthrough is here. The breakthrough is here.
Jesus. Jesus wants you forever. Here in this moment, right here, right now. stop me from shouting is there any Samuels in the house parts of safe just come and say what we need to do then we're gonna do one thing just quickly come on move, move, move. what an incredible day tomorrow morning's gonna be incredible you don't want to miss it 9 30 we are kicking off Doors open at 8.45. Make sure you check out the podcast. Well, what an absolutely incredible night that was. Pastor John Hanna, I am absolutely speechless. You do not want to miss tomorrow. Pastor John is actually back to preach to us again. So get ready, get expectant. 9.15 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, We also have some awesome interviews lined up for you. Our very own Pastor Joth as well as Pastor Scott from our Bible College. So if you've ever had a heart for that and want to hear some more information, you must tune in tomorrow. We have had so many countries uh, streaming in, thousands of you watching from home, and uh, uh, thousands upon thousands, I'm sure, across our Daystar friends and network. And we are just so glad that you did tune in from wherever you are around the world. Well, we just pray that you have an incredible day or night, whatever time it is you're watching. We can't wait to keep uh, hearing your testimonies and sharing with you uh, what God is doing here in Melbourne, Australia. And we want to hear your testimony. So don't forget to hashtag PSConf, uh, hashtag Planet Shakers. And also don't forget to comment on our Facebook, our YouTube or Instagram. And we would love to make this as fun or as interactive for you as we possibly can. Have a great night or great day, depending on where you are. And we will be back here 9.15 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time for another incredible day at Planet Shakers Conference 2019 Rain. God bless you.